Hi, everybody. This is Virginia Miller coming to you for, for the DeKalb County Library System. And Cinco de Mayo is right around the corner. So we have got to celebrate. So, I mean, I know the celebration was short lived if you know your history, but uh, we still need to mark the occasion. So what we're going to do, because we have that, it's, it's really celebratory, it's spring, it's colorful, it's cheerful, and we're going to um, do something uh, to, to um, spotlight Cinco de Mayo. So we're going to have our, our traditional uh, little charm items that we use. We're going to have our little skull. Let's at least turn them upside, uh, right side up. We're going to have our little skulls. We're going to have all of our little symbols that we use. There we go, our little rose. And we're going to, we're going to link it all with polymer. We're going to use polymer clay because that's nice and colorful too. And I don't use it often enough. I really we should use it more often. So we're going to use polymer clay because the color colors are just so vibrant and pretty perfect for the occasion. And we're going to make some wrapped links. I'm bringing back the swirls. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get started because I am on a mission to make this something that you can do within a relatively short period of time. And um, I, I want you to be able to enjoy it, do several of them and um, not feel like you have to set aside your whole day in order to watch the video or to make the piece. So the only things that you're going to need for this are your usual tools, round nose, square nose or chain nose and um, uh, cutters. You're going to need 20 gauge wire and beads. You can use any beads because I, this is going to be a link bracelet, um, but I wanted to do something simple, something uh, special. So that's why we're going to use these special pieces. But this is going to be a link bracelet. Uh, we're going to make our own clasp and our own hook. Um, so we are actually putting in some um, special things um, to make this link breast bracelet stand out a little bit. So let's go ahead and get going. Let's go down here to the other camera. Let's see what we have to work with. So we have our beads. I have some nice polymer clay. We're going to make simple loops. We're not wrapping our loops until we get to our clasp and then we'll do a wrap loop. But for the, the uh, link part of the bracelet, we're going to do simple loops. We're going to make these swirly um, links. And that's it. So let's grab some 20 gauge wire. What I really like about this is it doesn't take a lot of wire. Let me put this over here a little bit. It doesn't take a whole lot of wire. So what the easiest way to determine how much wire I need without wasting is to leave the wire intact. Those of you who get kits will have a nice long expansive wire that you can just leave intact and then cut as you, as you uh, create your links. Um, I wanna reiterate something I've been saying for a while is that, and that is that these, vid these videos are free, the tutorials are free, the kits are free. There is no charge for any of it. And um, if you have any questions, please feel free to get in contact with me at jewelrygen. 20 at gmail.com and ask any questions that you might have. Show me any pictures of what you make because I want to see them and leave me any comments or feedback because we would love to hear them. So let's get started. This is what we're going to be doing. We're going to make a nice simple link um, loop to link everything together. So I'm going to start with a bead. The easiest way to uh, people always say, well, how much wire do I need? Leave your wire intact. Feed your bead on the wire and make your loop. Now there are two ways to make your loop. I'm gonna show you um, one way on this end and another way on the other end. So I'm gonna go ahead and just slide my wire down. I'm going about a third of the way down my pliers because I don't need too big a loop. So I'm gonna go about a third of the way down my pliers, make sure the wire is not sticking out the other side. And I'm just going to rotate my pliers 
a little bit at a time. I see people doing this. I'm going to take my pliers out. I see people doing this. And then they end up with a really, really messed up loop. You don't want to do that. You just want to do it in small increments, just a little bit at a time. Open, close, turn. Open, close, turn. I mean, you just, you don't have to rush it. And then before I know it, I have a loop. I kind of overextend it a little bit, but I can correct that because when you start off with your wire straight and make a loop, your loop's going to end up on the side. So I want to bring it back to the top. And in order to do that, I just put my pliers in my little loop right down there at the bottom where it starts and bend back the loop until it's on top of the wire. And by top of the wire, I mean it's just like an extension. Sort of looks like a little lollipop. Now, let's bring this camera down a little closer so you can get a better look. Okay. Here we go. So now it looks like a little lollipop. Let's bring it back a little further. Is that up? So now that's what I have. Now I'm going to find my bead, come back up here, and I'm going to cut it down to about half an inch. That might be too big, but that's fine. You can just cut off what you don't need and, um, and uh, make it smaller. If you cut it too small, you have to start over and we'd rather not have to do that. So I'm gonna give myself about a half an inch of wire beyond the bead, snip that off. And I'm gonna make my loop on the other side. Now, remember when I did it on this side, I started with my straight wire like this and made my loop which ended up on the side. This time I'm going to bring, I'm going to bend my wire back so that my loop, start with my loop on the side, my wire on the side so that my loop ends up on top. Now, here's another little trick. When I make my loop, I have this loop with the end, the tip, on this side of my wire. Now I'm going to do the other one so that my tip is on the other side of the wire because I just find it balances out better. So that's two things we need to do. I need to bend my wire over to the side, like so. And the tip of, this, of my loop on this side is on the same side as the tip of my wire on the non-loop side. And I'm going to make my loop go in about a third of the way down my pliers again. Rotate, open, rotate back, close, rotate, open, and just continue to do that until I have a closed loop. Now, remember what I said about that might be too much? It is because I have, oops, I have a little bit of space in between. My wire, my wire in my loop in my bead, and I don't want that in there. So what I'm gonna do is cut a little bit on the inside of my loop to get rid of that excess. What is going on with my camera? It's pointed wrong. Let's see here. Is that better? Let's be over. Put you right here in front of me. I'm just step out of the way. Okay. Okay, that's better. All right. So I want to get rid of this excess wire that I see here. I don't want that little nick down there. So what I'm going to do is cut off a small amount, just a little bit of the tip right on the inside of my loop. Just cut that off. 
get rid of that little bit. And just reclose my loop. And that little neck is gone. And now notice how my loops aren't going the same direction. One's going, see how they're not going the same direction? That's an easy fix. All I need to do is either take my fingers and twist until they're both going the same way, or I can use my pliers and twist. And now they're both going the same direction. There we go. So let's do another one of those. Let's grab another bead. Let's do this pretty green one. Slide that on. There it is. Slide that on my wire. Now this time I'm gonna bend my wire back. Just, just to show you a different way. Bend the wire back. Got my little half an inch. Slide my wire down a third of the way down my pliers. Make sure nothing's sticking out the back. Where's my camera? Here we go. Make sure nothing's sticking out of the other side of my pliers. Rotate, open, rotate back, and close back over the wire, rotate a little bit. Open, rotate back, close back down, and just keep doing that until I have a nice closed loop. See how it rests nicely on top of my wire? Yay. Very nice. Very nice, very nice, very nice. Okay, let's find my beat. Where'd you go? There you are. Slide it back down the wire. Cut my wire down to about a half an inch over here. Okay. Let's make my other loop. I'll close this one, it's not quite closed all the way. So let's close that up. Yeah, let's go over to the other side. My tip is over here. So I want the other tip to be over there. Just for balance and that's just me. I just find that it, it looks like it balances out better if I have the tips on opposite sides. Okay, and again, I'm gonna rotate, open, rotate back, close, rotate a little bit. Usually takes three to four turns before I have a closed loop. And there we are. Very nice. Now this loop is a little bit smaller than this one. So I'm gonna make this one just a tiny bit smaller to match right here on the inside of my loop, just a little tiny bit off. Get rid of that little tip and make my loop a little smaller to match the other one. There we go, nice. Let's do another one of those. Ooh, that is beautiful, but I think I'm saving that for my class. Now let's do this little purple one. How many do I have so far? One, two, three, four. I might not need, need any more, but Let's just see what I have so far. So I'm gonna go ahead and do my um, little cross and then my little rose. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing that we did with the round beads, just bead my bead on. Now, if you really do wanna just cut it off, you don't want to deal with the spool, et cetera, et cetera. What you need to do is put your bead on and then um, measure, add another half an inch on each side. I would suggest that you add an inch and a half. You're going to lose about 
a quarter of an inch, but that's no big deal, or a half an inch. So give yourself a, a half an inch on each side of your bead if you want to cut it off, and then clip that off, and then that's what you'll use for your wrap. It's um, very easy when you're doing a simple loop as far as a measurement is concerned. Again, going about a third of the way down my pliers, rotate, 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 until I have my closed loop, reach in with my, the tip of my pliers and bring my, bring the head of my loop back until it's straight. See? There we go, get over there. And that, that <laughs> this is not cooperating with me today. Move, 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 move. Okay. It doesn't wanna, it doesn't wanna stay still. Ugh, gee, this. Okay, bring that little head back until it's right over my wire. See who is what it is today. Looks like a little lollipop there. Okay, bring my bead down. Cut it off at about half an inch beyond my bead. And when you're cutting, when you're trying to do a measurement, I'm trying to do half an inch. And my cutters have a, a little well here. Make sure that the flat side is the side that you're measuring from. So if I want about a half an inch and I measure from the flat side, my, my measurement is more um, uh, correct. I see people trying to do it from this side and then they end up with way too much because you've got this little well. So go to the back side of your pliers if you're using this type of plier, and that will give you a more accurate measurement to cut from. I'm gonna cut that off. Check to see where my other end tip is. My tip is over there. So I'm gonna bend this back. Here's my little tip. I'm going to bend this back towards in the same direction as that little tip that's on the loop side. And make my loop the other way. Get over there. Sliding my wire down, down a third of the way down my pliers again. Small turn, turn, turn and turn until I have my loop. There we go. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Nicely wrapped. And now let's do my rows, same way. Slide that on, bend my wire back this time. Make my loop, I can tell right now that I have too much. So I'm going to cut that off a little bit. Okay. Slide my wire down a third of the way down my pliers. Rotate until I have a loop. Nice, nice, nice. I have a little bit of an extension here. I'm going to get rid of that. So I need to cut off a little bit of my loop. Go back in and reclose. And there we go. Nice. Slide my rows down. Cut it off about a half an inch from the opening. And this one ha has petals, so I have to be careful not to cut it off a half an inch from the petal, which is right here. I need to cut it off a half an inch from where the drill opening is. 
that's where my loop is going to go. Okay, let's cut that off. It flew out. See, I wasn't holding it. I wasn't holding it tight enough, and my, my wire flew away from me. Okay, let's put that back in. Okay, there is my tip on this side, so I'm going to bend it back toward that in the same direction of that tip. Grab my round nose pliers, slide my wire down about a third of the way down my pliers, and rotate, open, rotate back, close, rotate, open, rotate back, and close, and keep doing that until I have my loop. And there we go. All right. Everything is ready to go. Now let's check because I need to check and see if I have enough of everything so far. And then I'm going to show you how to make these guys. So, take that off of there. They don't need to be together. Yeah, they can stay together. Okay, so I'm going to have a polymer clay on either side of my um, specialty bead. So that's going to be like that. And then I'm going to put one of these cute little links in between. And oh, it really is hard to see this silver on this, isn't it? Why have anything darker out there? Let me see what I've got. See, I changed to the green because the other one that I had was hard to see dark. Let's see if I put it on this bag. I don't think that's going to work. Oh. I put it on this piece of paper that has the names of my best folks. No, that doesn't work. Oh my gosh. What, what, what? I don't think more light is the answer. I think that's going to make it. Oh, I'm wrong. That does work. Okay. So, I'm going to have polymer clay, one of my specialty beads, another polymer clay, and one of these lovely little loopy links. And then clay, bead, clay, another link, clay bead, and clay. So that, that is what we're looking at right now. Yeah. So let's see what I'm looking at size-wise. I think I'm going to go ahead and link these together so that I can see what I've got as far as length. But the, before I do that, I need to show you how to make our little swirly connectors. My wrist is about seven and a half inches. Oof, I think it's gonna go a little long, but there's a trick that I'm going to show you. Okay, yeah. All right, good. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so let's, let me show you how to go ahead and make our little swirly link. And all we need for that is about five inches of wire. So let me measure that off on my bead board. Five inches. And I'm going to make a spiral. So I'm just gonna make a little loop doesn't have to be a big loop. I'm going to go about an eighth of an inch down away from my pliers. Now, I always hesitate to tell you exactly where to go on my pliers because my pliers are going to be different than your pliers. But I just want a small loop 
not a large loop, not a tiny loop, just a small loop for my center. And I'm going to rotate just like I would for a regular loop. So I'm going to keep on going until I have a loop. So there's my loop. And now I'm going to continue to wrap a nice open spiral. So I'm still wrapping. I'm making another loop around the first loop. That's not right against it, but not too far away from it either. Now, once I get to where I have enough space, I can use my fingers to manipulate the rest of my spiral. Now, this is a very free form thing. So you can take this and try to make it look exact, but you don't have to do that. It's going to be close enough because it's a spiral. The biggest thing, you, thing that you want to do is make sure that they're not too far away in size. You want them about the same size. So whatever size you make your first one, you want to kind of duplicate it on the second one. So I'm going to go ahead and make my little spiral. I'm just going to keep turning until I have a nice open spiral. Let's check it against this one. There we go. I think the loop on this one in the center is just a teeny tiny bit smaller. So I'm going to close this up just a little bit. Just a tad. There, so now it's a little more of a match. Again, it's not going to be perfect because it's a spiral. Just want to get it as close as I can. All right. That's good. And now when I look at this, oh my, I have hangnails. Uh, my little tip here, and there's a little head of my loop. So I want one full rotation. That's one, and that's two. Let's see if I have that here yet. One and two, yes. So when I get to my second one, I'm going to go up. Let's see, one, two, I'm gonna go up to the other side. So there's the tip. I'm gonna bring the wire up to the opposite side of my tip. Just keep wrapping the wire around itself until I get one, two, one, two. And now, there's my little tip, there's my little wire. I'm going to make a loop right here. And again, it doesn't have to be a large loop. So I'm just gonna slide down about a third of the way down my pliers. And again, there's the tip, there's the top of my loop and the top of my center loop right there. And my the loop on top of my piece is going to be right across from my loop, the tip of my loop. So I'm going to bring my wire around my pliers, like so. Bring it all the way down until I can't go any further. And open up, take my pliers out and bring them back in. Bring that wire all the way around until I have a loop. And then I'm going to bring my wire down the side here, the other side. And wrap it around to the opposite side of my loop. 
So there's my loop on top. And I'm gonna have another loop right here on the bottom. Make some adjustments. So there's my top loop, my one loop. I'm gonna make a loop on the other side. And remember how when you make your loop, if you start on the side, your loop ends up on top. If you start on the top, your loop ends up on the side. I want my loop to end up on the top right here. And I am looking at that hangnail and it's driving me crazy. Just don't look. Okay, so I'm over in on the side here and I'm gonna make my loop so that it'll end up on top on the opposite side of my first loop. I rarely get it perfect. I always have to rotate, which is fine. Okay, make my little loop. Here we go. Slip off this tail because we don't need that. Wow, that's pretty cl close to perfect. That's it's very close to perfect. Okay, make my adjustments. It's a little bit on the side. Because there's my top. There's my other loop. I'm going to rotate it a little bit more that way. Not too shabby. I'm going to go just a tiny bit more that uh, the opposite direction. A little more on us. Get out of there. Close it up. And there we have it. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. And just make any adjustments that you need to make. And one thing I like to do with this, because we're using this as a link, is take my little dollar store, dollar store mallet and give it a, a little hammering. Not enough to flatten the wire, just enough to strengthen the wire. The only part that I do not want to tap on is the part with the loop that's crossed over at the top. The other loop, the one that's on the end, that's the one I want to work on. So now it has a little more strength. And notice when you do that, it opens the wires up a little bit. So just squeeze them back where you want them. There we go. So now let's start to put everything together. Okay. So I'm going to take this off of here because I think I'm going to make this the top of my bracelet and I want to put my clasp there. My clasp is going to feature one of my polymer clay beads. So, all right, so what do I want to do? I'm going to go with the green, the swirl, the purple, I need a polymer clay there. I'm going to have a polymer clay on each side, get rid of that little piece of wire on each side of my swirls. Okay, there we go. Another polymer. And swirl. Polymer and the rose. And let's see where I am in length. I might need this, I might not. Let's see. All right, let's link everything together. Very easy. All I need to do is open up one of my loops. That's why these nice open loops are wonderful. And I want the head of my skeleton to be on the top. So I'm going to open this bottom one. 
slide on the other link, close it. Now, the proper way to open and close your links. Squeeze that, I want that nice and closed. Yes. You don't want to pull your loops open like that. You want to open it, just turn it up to the side, and then slide your link on and close. Just push it back down. Okay. And one of these, of course, opens and the other one doesn't. So open, slide on my feed, close. Make sure it's nice and snug. Okay. Next one. Open it, slide that on. Let me see if I want to take it that way. Yes. Close. And I just do this until I have everything linked together. Another swirly swirl. Is that what I want to do? I think I'm changing my mind. Let me look at my pattern here. That's pretty, but you know what? I think I'm going to put the swirls on either end. Instead of, I want to do that. See what I have so far. I'm debating. Yeah, you know what? I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put my swirls on each end instead of alternate, alternate, alternate. Let's try that. See, that's the fun of having open loops. I can change it the way I want it. So I'm going to open this up. Let me go ahead and put this up here, and then I can look before I change. Is that what I want? Swirls on either end, and then I can have more of this showing in the center. So I can do that. Let's open that up. Let's put this guy here. I'm going to attach it to my swirly. Close. And then I'm going to take it out of here and continue with these. So it'll be swirl, polymer, Specialty B polymer, specialty B polymer, specialty B polymer, and swirls. Let's try that. I think that's what I want to do. So I can have the center show as many of these beads as possible. Let's do that. Let's take it there and up of here.
All right. Head of my class. This is fun. The design process is a lot of fun. And obviously, I had not, I thought about it, but I hadn't put it together yet. So we're doing this on the fly. Yes. And then I think I'm going to go with my little rosy, rosy rose. Okay. And another bead. Which one do I want? Pink or orange? Let's go with the orange. Set that on. Close it up. This one up, nice and snug. Okay, and my swirly on the other side. I've got two swirlies, so I made some ahead of time. All right, so this is what I have. Let's see what I'm looking at for length. <laughs> yep, I think I'm going to need a swirl in the middle. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to add a swirl. So I've got swirl, I'm going to do, do, do. I'm going to do this, and I'm going to put a swirl here. Do, do, do. Let's go ahead and put that on and see what it looks like on my arm. Okay, good. I've got another good inch and a quarter that I need to go. So I need to add another one of these guys on one end. Okay. And then I need to do a class. Do I know want another score? Another score on there? No. No, 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 no. Not another swirl. I'm debating. Should I? What do you think? Should I put one in the middle? Or not. Uh, uh, uh. So another bead on there. Let's put another bead on. Let's go. What color? Yeah, let's put another bead on to match the other side. So let's go ahead and get some more wire. There's another piece of wire here. Put the bead on. Make my loop. Cut it off. Make my other loop. Opposite side. Just like I did before. Okay, and sketch.
And let's see what we have. Yes, 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 yes. In fact, I don't need that other one because I'm going to go ahead and use my beads to make my link, my a loop, and my clasp, because this is the kind of clasp I want to make with a bead on it. Yeah, so I can take this one off. It's always good to check. And now I'm going to use this to make my loop. I love beaded loops. I love decor decorative loops. So for that, let's use up the rest of this wire. Straighten that out a little bit. Get these little kinks out. You can always use the, the tip of your towel to straighten it out a little bit if you need to. Your clothes, your mat, whatever. All right, so I'm going to make a loop that'll be the receptacle for my hook. So the way I'm going to do that is. I'm gonna make a big loop and a small loop. My small loop is just going to be open and it's gonna connect with this. As a matter of fact, you know what? I'm gonna make the small loop wrap. So I'm gonna give myself a good inch of wire, bend back my wire, slide my, plot, my wire down about a third of the way down my pliers, wrap the small tail, the short tail over my pliers until I have a loop, like so. And I'm gonna grab my flat pliers and I'm gonna wrap that little tail of wire around just under that little loop, one and a half to two rotations. Just one and a half to two times around that's all I need. I'm going to squeeze those little ends together, nice and neat. And then I'm going to cut off the tail. Nice and close to the wraps. This little end is going to fly, so I'm going to turn it down into the pocket of my beadboard so that it drops right down in there instead of flying across the room. Where I'm gonna to have to crawl around and try to find it so it doesn't end up in my vacuum cleaner. If you have carpet or on your toes, if you're walking around barefoot. Okay, I'm gonna push it end down nice and close to the wrap so that there aren't any sharp edges exposed. And then I'm going to feed on my bead so I can make a nice beaded loop. Now this is going to attach this way. Fortunately, this doesn't have any uh, there's no real real directive on this, it doesn't matter. So, because they're both round. But what I wanna do is bend my wire back the same direction this is flat. I wanna bend my wire back so that when I make my loop, it's also flat. And I'm gonna make a nice large loop. So I'm gonna slide my wire all the way to the back of my pliers, just before I get to the hill. And I'm going to take the tail of wire over my pliers and wrap it around. 
until I have a nice big lip. So there's my lip. Doesn't have to be huge, just big enough so that your foot will go through it. And then I'm gonna take my flat pliers. I'm gonna wrap that tail around. Yeah, two times is enough. Just between my loop and my bead. I'm gonna clip off that tip. And I like the end to be under the flat part of my loop instead of off on the side where even if you push it down, it might leave sharp edges to catch on something. Clip that off. Notice I hold on to the wire so it doesn't go flying. And then push down that tail. It's nice and snugly in between the rings of the wire. Very good. And there's my beaded loop. Neat, huh? And that's just going to attach right there. Let's just go ahead and put it on. Let's check this again. I might not even need that other bead. So I put that on, let me go ahead and put it on this side. See if I can take that other bead off. All right, here's my loop. When I make my hook, it's going to be this size. Let's see what that looks like. As far as length is concerned, do I need Oh, yes, that's going to be perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. I do need to flip this around though, because I need this open part, this open side of my little swirl to be out here where I can attach it to what's going to be my wrapped hook. So let's take this off of here. And I'm going to turn it around. So that the closed part is next to the bead. Okay, so let's go ahead and make my hook. This little guy. And I love this blue bead so much that I found another one that was close to it because I think the color is so beautifully vibrant. So what I need is about five inches of wire. You may not need that much, that's okay. Just straighten that out a little bit. Overbended. Okay, I'm gonna give myself about five inches. The wire, that's, that's gonna be too much. One, two, three, I, let's just go with five. If I need to get rid of some, I will. Five inches. This is probably enough right here. That's four and a half inches. I'm gonna give it a shot. I'm gonna try this little four and a half inch piece of wire and see if that will work to make my lid. All right. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do, I said, Luke, actually, I'm making a hook. First thing I'm going to do is make a tiny little loop 
on the tip. This is about four and a half inches. So I'm going to make a little tiny loop. Actually, it's going to be a three quarter loop. I'm not going to close it. I'm just going to go right to the tip of my wire with the tip of my pliers and make a tiny three quarter loop. A little bit more. It's about five eighths closed. Okay, so I have a nice little three quarter loop here. And now I'm going to take my square pliers and I'm going to close it up into a little nub. So I'm going to push the uh, bottom part that's open towards the top of my loop. Just close that up. until I have a tiny little nub here. There we go. And now I'm going to make my hook. I'm going to slide that loop all the way to the back of my pliers, like so. And now I'm going to turn my pliers and wrap that around until I have a shepherd's hook. So there's my hook. Yeah. And now I just need to make my loop on the other side. Add my bead. Oops, can't find the hole. There it is. So now you're going, wait a minute though, if you do that, isn't that just going to go up in the hook? Yeah, it would if I wasn't going to wrap it, but I am. Have faith. So, what I want to do, if you notice, my loop is flat and my hook is going the other direction. So my loop, see how my hook is flat against the um, against my table? My loop needs to go the other direction. So I'm going to bend my wire off to the side, grab my pliers, I'm going to go down about halfway. It doesn't have to be too big a loop. In fact, it doesn't even need to be halfway, but that's where I'm going to go. About a third to halfway down my pliers. I'm going to bring the tail of my wire over my pliers and down the side. And I'm going to open my, my pliers up, rotate back, clamp back down, and bring that wire all the way over, like so. Now I have a loop. And now I'm going to do something a little bit decorative, just because why not? So I'm going to give myself one wrap around my loop, just between my loop and my bead. And then I'm going to bring that wire up the side of my bead. Like so. And wrap it around between the bottom of my hook and the bead. So I just bring it up the side and wrap it around the top. Just like that. This looks blurry. I don't know if this was my terrible eyesight or 
Well, it really is word. So I wrapped it around. It went up the side there. Wrap around the top, just between the bottom of my hook and my bead. And it just needs one or two wraps. And that's a design preference. I would give it at least one and a half, just for the sake of security. Nice and secure. And I always like my tail to end up underneath the hook. So then it can't catch on anything. That's very nice. And tight. And the wraps. Clip off that tail. and push down that little end. Until it rests under the hook, the loop of my hook. There we go. And now just make whatever little adjustments I need to make on my loop. Straighten that out. My loop is flat and my hook is going up and down or my hook is flat and my loop is going up and down. And then I'm gonna bend my hook back a little bit give it a little graceful curve. I always like the loop to rest as close to my wraps as possible so that when I um, clasp it, the clasp won't come out too easily. So there is my wrapped hook. And now you see why I needed to make sure this opening was on the side, on this side so that I and attach it to my book. Okay, slide that on, close it up. And that's another reason why it's so good to give this a little bit of a hammering because you don't want it to come open. Sure, that's nice and closed. And there we go. There's my bracelet. Cinco de Mayo, here we come. What do you think? We are representing. My little skeleton around here, so you can see it. He, he, the back of his head is very narrow, so it keeps falling over. But there it is. There's my Cinco de Mayo bracelet. Yay! And I love, absolutely love the wrapped clasps because then it doesn't look like a clasp. It looks like part of the design. It's very pretty. Very easy to do. Nice. All right. Let's put it on, shall we? Come on. I always have the worst. They have all these gadgets that make it easy for you to get your 
bracelets on. When you get old and decrepit like me, wait a minute, maybe that's too tight. I like it tight so that it doesn't come loose once I, once I put it on, but sometimes I overdo the tightness. This is one of those times. There we go. Get in there. Squeeze. There. Okay. See, I can't even see where the clasp is. Where is it? This is the clasp. <laughs> That's the clasp. It looks like part of the design. Isn't that awesome? I love it. Anywhere you turn, it looks great. I want a little skeleton. People say, I want to make the bracelet. I don't want the skull. Ugh. But that's part of it. Now, if you really, really want to get be fun, you can do dangles. You can put some dangles on here. But ugh, I don't really think it's necessary. We have everything on here that we need. This is so neat. This is a really neat project. And it's so easy to do, as you can see. Quick and easy. Okay, I'll stop looking at it now. That's ridiculous. So let's let's just wrap it up. And again, I wanted to reiterate again that these tutorials are free, 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 free from us to you. You never have to pay for them, ever. Isn't that neat? Oh my gosh, it goes with my shirt. So if you ever have any questions or comments or feedback, please, please feel free to con contact me at jewelrygen20 at gmail.com. Again, that's jewelry, J-E-W-E-L-R-Y-G-I-N-2-0 at gmail.com. Send me any questions you have, feedback, um, show me pictures, of what you make. I love that when you do that. And um, if you ever have a video that you can't find, you can ask me, give me a description and I should be able to find it for you. And I can send you the link. They are there on the library Facebook page. Always. They are not going away. From what I understand, they're telling me they're never going away. And there's three years worth of videos out there right now. So just give me a description. I should be able to find it and send you the link, or you can go to the DeKalb Library Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash DeKalb Library. That's facebook.com slash D-E-K-A-L-B-L-I-B-R-A-R-Y, all one word. Enter, go into the search engine and put um, jewelry with gin or just jewelry gin, and um, hit enter and all of the videos. So links will come up. That's all you have to do. Ah, that's it. That's it for today. That is our program. That is our um, project. Cinco de Mayo. Enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. And we will see you next time. Enjoy the rest of your week. Enjoy your weekend and so on. Bye-bye.